Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Welcome to a very wonderful day, the 7th day of August 2024. Uh, it's supposedly uh, the 7th day into the end bad governance protest, but we thank God that normalcy is returning to almost all the states. Uh, apart from the states that are experiencing curfew right now, uh, normalcy has returned to a lot of other states. Shops are opening, banks are opening, everywhere work is going on as normal. But the message has been passed uh, from wherever you stand uh, to the government and from the government that there is a listening ear somewhere that is trying to do something better and different. Nigeria will be great. Let's anchor our hopes on that and make sure that we do everything to make sure Nigeria comes up top as we want it. On the program this morning, we'll be looking at some uh, very uh, hot topics that we'll be dealing with. A Nigerian government moves to revamp textile industry is a top trending issue. We're going to be discussing that in a, a bit now. Uh, but like I said, we are going to have two top uh, hot topics and then the top trending issues will be discussed and then we'll go to uh, the papers to see what the papers are talking about, what made it to the front pages of uh, some of our national dailies. So let's begin with the top trending issues. The first one here is that Nigerian government moves to revamp textile industries. Now, the federal government is mulling a, a revamp of the textile industries in Nigeria to leverage on its job creation potential. To this end, the Vice President Kashim Shatima hosted a number of stakeholders at the presidential villa Abuja on Tuesday, which included the governors of Lagos and Imo State to draw ideas on how best to go about revamping the moribund industries. Imo Governor Hopo Zodimma said it was germane for those in the helm of affairs to do everything within its power to stimulate the Nigerian economy, hence the buy-in of governors to the project. He said, and I quote, like the United Nations cotton manufacturing, the entire production chain of cotton is up to 10 slides or 10 sites rather, and the whole idea is to leverage on this opportunity to revamp the industries in Nigeria, which many of them are now moribund, particularly in the cotton and textile sector. This is a new opportunity that is creating a new partnership for us to cross-pollinate ideas with experts to bring new skills, new ideas, and new innovations into revamping the industries in Nigeria, and that will create jobs and engage our young men and women that are currently roaming the streets. End of quote. Corroborating uh, Uzodimma, the Lagos State Governor of Bajide Somolu urged Nigerians to patronize Made in Nigeria textiles because of the impact it would have on the economy. It's a very, very laudable uh, move by the federal government to make sure there's a revamp in that industry. Uh, textile used to be the in thing in those days. We remember also that cocoa used to be the in thing as well. And the palm, uh, we remember that Malaysia had to come to Nigeria to understudy how successful our palm plantations were. And they went back and now they're the highest producer of uh, uh, palm oil and everything related to the, the oil palm. Uh, so we are now going back to Malaysia, more or less, to understudy them. People who understudied us are now being uh, the people that we are studying. So if we want to go back to what really gave us a household name in those days, uh, then it is a very good thing. So sometimes you need to go back to your past to reset so that your future will be better. Maybe that's what, is, what Nigeria is doing. So we may not be quarreling so much about returning to the national anthem that was in the 60s. If that will reawaken our mentality to the fact that Nigeria needs to grow one step forward and not two step backward, like uh, one of the musicians sang uh, a lot of years ago, one step forward, two step backwards, war in a Babylon. This is not Babylon, this is Nigeria, and we are blessed with all the natural resources. I'd just I'd like to point out that the fact that um, the manufacturing hub or the cotton hub or anything you want to call it was in Lagos and Kano or Kaduna or something like that. Um, in the south it was Lagos definitely, in the north Kaduna or Kano. Um, in the past, it doesn't mean that those places may necessarily be the places that we will be thinking about today. Those industries have died. 
So we should be thinking about proximity to where it can be produced, the cotton raw materials can be produced, and every other thing that, will be, what, that the cotton will be used for uh, can be cited in those places. For instance, if we have a good landmass, safe landmass, because right now we're not even looking at landmass, we're looking about the safety of whatever piece of land that we have. If we have good landmass in Bauchi that is safe enough and that we can plant this uh, cotton and harvest it, and maybe citing an industry somewhere there to uh, manufacture whatever is going to be manufactured or tap from this raw material in Bauchi State will be the best thing. I remember there's a particular state where a senatorial district, an entire senatorial district, uh, produces rice. Uh, but when the meal uh, came uh, to that state, the rice meal uh, process came to that state, they took it to another local government that does not produce rice, so that the people who produce the rice will be carrying it to the local government that does not produce rice. And then there was a a, a seeding plant, more or less, for the rice where um, new varieties and all that would be planted and distributed to the farmers. It was now placed in the state capital, which is like seven hours from the, the place where this rice will be needed. So I just wonder sometimes how, how the government thinks. Is that to show that you are spreading infrastructure or you want to show people that they are um, enjoying the dividends of democracy, that you will take something they do not need to that place and the people who need it will have to transport themselves to for a seven-hour journey to just come and get the seedlings to come and plant in their farms. It doesn't make sense to any of us. If there is cocoa in Ibadan, for instance, and you have a beverage-making company coming into uh, Nigeria and you take it to Kanu or you take it to Lagos or you take it anywhere else but Ibadan, Ibadan it will not make sense for the average man like me, <laughs> but for government, maybe they know better. So when we're talking co uh, cotton, where you find the land to plant it, to get the raw materials, please find it in your heart as well to place the industry there that will be using these raw materials. It makes for easier production of whatever you want to do and the development of that area. It shouldn't just be you're coming to tap our resources and going to develop somewhere else. That is what is happening here in Nigeria. We produce the crude oil. Some other person goes there produces petrol, brings it to us, produces Vaseline, produces all the things that come from the crude oil and sells it back to us. So if we are gaining uh, 100 Naira, for instance, for every crude uh, barrel, then the things that come from other countries to us that we are buying, maybe up to like 1,000 or 1,500, are we penny-wise pound foolish? Maybe the economists will know how that works for a country and helps them better than producing it themselves and then getting all these other byproducts from it and exporting to other countries. The economists will know that, like I said. But cocoa, or cotton rather, coming back to Nigeria is a good thing. Let's hope that uh, that is just the beginning of the revamp of other things. But one thing I also saw from that report is the fact that um, our governors are encouraging us to, to produce in Nigeria and use in Nigeria, and we should uh, stop thinking about Italian-made suit, um, Canada-made this, um, American-made that, French-made this and that. So we should be thinking Nigeria. So when we see shoes produced in Nigeria, with leather produced in Nigeria and everything from Nigeria, we should patronize made in Nigeria goods. I'm just hoping that one governor will get up and say, all my commissioners, you know what, I'm going to, produ I'm going to buy cars for you, but they will be made in Nigeria cars. And um, whenever we're giving you furniture allowance, we're expecting you to buy from the furniture store that is Nigerian. Because I've seen a lot of Nigerian furniture outfits doing wonderful, uh, wonderful jobs. Even some roadside uh, furniture makers are doing very, very wonderfully. But our people are not patronizing them. So it's not enough to just say, uh, use made in Nigerian goods. Let us see uh, you doing what you're seeing. I remember Tai Sholarin was a, an activist and he went about wearing what he felt would show uh, that will mark him out as an activist and um, his khaki that he was wearing and every other thing just marked him out and everybody who wanted to be outspoken began wearing that. I, I think maybe the, um, 
the senator representing one of the senatorial districts in Edo, a former, former governor of Edo State, Adam Soshimole, may have borrowed something from him because he was wearing the same safari like Adam Soshimole, only that he went in shorts. So if we want to show people what to do, we have to uh, show example, let people see us and copy from us. So government, make sure that you're stocking your entire uh, government house like for the governors your entire government house you're stocking it with things that are made in nigeria we cannot say nigerian made things are not durable enough if you think that go and ask for a stabilizer that was <laughs> nigerian made you'll find out that in the entire house it will draw the entire current into one room that's just a uh, jokes apart anyway nigerian things are good enough so our leaders should show us the way so that we can follow because everybody wants to be like the politician next door so that uh, you can wear Italian made, you can wear uh, Bangladesh made, we can wear everything but Nigerian. So let us show by example, let's lead by example. That's bottom line. Okay, the other thing is that please military deny free, uh, firing live ammunition during protest. That is the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetokun, saying, uh, that the police, military, and other security agencies did not use excessive force on the end bad governance protesters. Uh, speaking at a meeting of security agencies' heads on Tuesday in Abuja, the IGP said there were attacks on security operatives deployed to manage the protest. The police and the military, indeed, no other security agency involved in the management or any other security agency involved in the management of the protest has deployed excessive use of force, according to Egberto Kung. Instead, Egbertokun said what they had was attacks on security agents during the protest. From the records, there were no shooting incidents by the police. Um, the police or military did not use any live ammunition in the management of this protest. Instead, we have had cases, according to Egbertokun, we have had cases where our officers were injured and are in critical condition as we speak. I will dismiss that as fake news and very wrong allegations. We didn't use excessive force at all. We didn't even deploy the whole of our strength in this protest, even when it turned violent. We have water cannons we did not deploy. We have rubber bullets we didn't use. All that we have used in the management of this protest is tear gas and nothing more. Group of people who started campaign, subversive campaign, waving flags of other countries and openly calling for military takeover of government. This is not a protest, but an offense of treason. The Nigeria police has arrested a number of them, and they will be dealt with accordingly. It is very, very implicating for them to be seen with flags of other countries while on protest. The police and the military Indeed, no other security agency involved in the management of this protest has deployed excessive use of force. Instead, what we had was attack on security agents during the protest. From our record, there was no shooting incident by the police. The police or the military did not use any live ammunition in the management of this protest. We have had cases where our officers were injured critically and are still in critical condition in the hospital as we speak. So I will dismiss that as fake news. It is not true. It's a very wrong allegation. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Um, so maybe the police and the army will have to explain to the families of those who lost their lives, who shot them. Uh, because, um, okay, let's believe that the police did not use force. Uh, let's believe that the police and the army did not use live bullets in those uh, rallies. Uh, some other people shot uh, these over 15 people we're hearing that died at the protest. Uh, let's know who killed them. Uh, do your investigations and give us the results. Uh, because we've heard this before during the NSAS, the police denied it. In fact, we had um, a former governor turned minister who became a 
a detective and found bullets that nobody else found in a place where uh, there was not supposed to be a bullet, where everybody combed the place and didn't find anything. He found the bullet himself, and everybody began to call him uh, a PI or um, a, an investigator or something. Well, at the end of the day, we found that the NSAS, we even had a commission of inquiry, and people are being compensated, uh, people are being retrieved from mortuaries and all that, and there was still that narrative that there was nobody shot and killed at the toll gate. No matter what it is, the police should do their investigations and prove to Nigerians that they didn't fire live bullets at the protesters and let us know those people who did, because this is the, uh, the, the argument that we're having. In fact, now they have arrested people because they were waving um, the flag of Russia, uh, so to speak. Someone has come out with an argument that it could have just been the illiteracy of the tailor who was making the um, flag of the Nigerian Armed Forces because it has the same colors and he just mixed them up. That could be an argument that could be taken to a court and all that. So it's not enough to just arrest people and say they were calling for another government to come and, and do us. Maybe these people were actually calling for military government, which I do not support, by the way, uh, for military government to take uh, over, uh, which is uh, also a crime. But uh, it didn't go out of the shores of Nigeria to say that they are inviting another country to come. But what I'm saying here is that while you are arresting people for doing bad, also look very critically into what your own people did or they may have done because there are so many videos so many yeah so many videos that will stand as evidence for people like us who do not know what if we go to the court with can stand or not stand we are looking at those videos we know the timeline of the timeline of these videos we are hearing the the um the background voices in these videos, and we know that the videos are from the protests, at least from what we have seen, unless you come with a forensic, a forensic uh, proof that these videos were actually doctored and the people that we are told are, were being killed were not killed, and maybe you find them out and shame them, uh, Nigerians will always believe that you use excessive force, force on the people. I don't know whether water cannons are worse than tear gas, I don't know which one is worse. Uh, none of them has been used on me, and I pray they never use them on me. But uh, by saying that you kept rubber bullets there and you kept uh, water cannons there and only used tear gas, I don't know what it is. Because we have also seen a video where um, an army personnel was trying to tell the policeman to leave the protesters alone because he was addressing the protesters and the protesters were listening and trying to follow instructions but uh, the police came and started shooting tear gas and that is where all hell broke loose and you're not talking about this we also saw videos of uh, protesters climbing on top of the uh, Ahmad personnel carrier and you said that it was you were still in charge and there was a maneuver by your driver and all that so this is just a doctored video i don't know who carried the people and put on top of the apc uh, while we were seeing that we were seeing on the on the social media videos and all that but Bottom line is you have to do more to convince Nigerians that you behaved professionally during the protest and that the people that died, you didn't have a hand in it. I'm talking about the security agencies. I'm not saying that the security agencies didn't do well. They did a lot to, to quell uh, some of these um, uh, hoodlums' behaviors in so many other places and all that. But in the first place, um, uh, if there is something that you are being accused of, do an investigation before you come out with a statement. Not after one or two years you come out and apologize or begin to pay compensation for people who died and all that. Our hearts also go to the families of, uh, and the victims uh, that are uh, security agents that uh, were affected by this. Uh, you have told us that um, some of them were wounded, some of them uh, were yeah, wounded in, in the course of carrying out their duties. We pray that they recover very fast. Uh, but for the families who lost their loved ones, you may need to do a better explanation to that. But the, the, the beauty is that right now, there is relative calm. 
if there is a protest, there's a cold protest, uh, like this, they have the Cold War, where you don't have to carry guns and go into the battlefield, but you're, you're fighting nonetheless, there may be a cold protest, but the violence has gone down, and I like that a lot. Every Nigerian is happy that the violence didn't uh, go beyond what it was in a few days uh, at the beginning of the protest, maybe day one, two, and three of the protest. We thank God for that. We hope that Nigeria stays peaceful as it is right now. Now, in bad governance rally, reverse protesters march to Wiki's home. On Tuesday, that was yesterday, the end bad governance protest escalated in River State when a significant number of protesters marched to Port Harcourt and assembled outside Nyesom Wiki's residence. Wiki is both the former governor of River State and current minister for Federal Capital Territory, FCT. The protesters were captured in a popular video chanting and carrying placards that conveyed diverse messages after finally arriving at Wiki's strongly defended mansion, many of the demonstrators settled on the pavement outside his house with an unwavering yet tranquil resolve. The protesters were blocked from getting close to the property by an armored personnel carrier stationed nearby. Uh, we thank God that it, it didn't escalate to something else. Uh, nobody supports burning of houses like we've heard that one of the uh, one of the National Assembly members was saying his colleague's house has been burned somewhere um, and that is not acceptable no matter what they are doing and all that. It's not acceptable. But those who are in power should also know that it comes a time where some of these things cannot be held back. We have this protest that notice was given. There may be a protest tomorrow that no notice is given and that one is always a very, very dangerous one. The vice president is seen in a video uh, maybe that was doctored, I don't know, but he's seen in a video which is making the rounds on social media telling a story about how um, somebody really high up in the political ladder, the wife and the driver were on their way and they were stopped by uh, some youths. He called them miscreants and they told them in Hausa language which he translated to mean bastards, you are now enjoying while we are suffering. They shattered the window of the car and it was the wife of this political uh, stalwart and the driver that ran away. It wasn't the youths that broke the, the car. Even though they didn't burn the car or take the car away, but it gets to a point like that. Who knows what will happen the next time? This is not scaremongering. This is just a fact that sometimes when people perceive, maybe it, it is not even real, but when they perceive that they are being treated unfairly, they are there are so many things that can be done and it may not be very good. So all of us should learn a lesson from this protest. All of us should learn a lesson from life itself that, like they say, I can't remember who made this statement, but as long as the, the poor do not sleep, the rich will not sleep. That's a paraphrase, not exactly the words. But as the poor are not sleeping and they are hungry and all that, you, the rich, you cannot sleep. And that is why... I always say sometimes being a rich man is the same thing as being in the prison. Your gate is higher than the prison yard. Your, your car, you cannot see outside uh, clearly because it's tinted and armored car. It's just like um, uh, the black Maria that is carrying a criminal and all that. So it depends on the mindset that you have uh, between uh, in any, water, any condition that you find yourself. So our leaders should make our people have the mindset that they have their interest at heart all the time. And so governance will be easier for everybody. We just want a, a Nigeria that works for us, not El Dorado that is perfect, but a Nigeria that works for us, that we have the feeling that it cares about us. As simple as that. We wish all the people who are in government luck and safety and we also wish them sense um, uh, in carrying out whatever they are doing, just like Solomon prayed for a sense. Solomon prayed for wisdom. May this wisdom also be granted our leaders so that they make the right choices and may the followers be humble enough to understand when the leaders are trying their best to do right by us. Well, that's it for the top trending issues. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at the paper. Stay with us. <music>